Okay, thank you for joining us. Uh, this is the Deschutes County Administrator Finalist Community Forum. Uh, this is a Zoom uh, session. We also have live video and it's recorded for after the fact also. My name is Tony DeBone. I'm the, currently the chair of the Deschutes County Commission. The Board of Commissioners made up of uh, three elected officials. And the county administrator position is the, the CEO, the uh, county administrator uh, for the whole organization. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to share and for the public to get to know Nick Lelac, and he's the finalist for this important position this year. There is Spanish interpretation available, uh, and it's at the globe setting in Zoom. Select Spanish as the, as the language. Uh, American Sign Language interpretation is also available. And I see she's doing a good job with a big smile on her face there. Uh, this forum is recorded for later viewing, as I mentioned, and available on the county's social media channels uh, after the fact also. The website is deschutes.org slash administrator. During this session, questions can be submitted during the community forum live. And it's 6 o'clock on Monday night, May 17th. Uh, for the live uh, session, you can send emails to info at Deschutes.org. We will be checking those real time. Submitted questions uh, may be reviewed and included as time allows. Uh, this all started with the announcement of our uh, county administrator, our current county administrator, uh, retiring in September of 2021. Uh, so the process was begun. Uh, so they're one of the interesting statements in uh, the history of Deschutes County. Uh, in 1978, it was converted from one judge and two commissioners to three commissioners and a strong administrator position, 1978. And there's been three administrators since. So now at this time, we are recruiting for the fourth administrator in that long period of time. So the uh, search began at the new year this year. Uh, we, we communicated, uh, gathered public comments about the process. Uh, we're using our, uh, our, our human resources group here at Deschutes County to really put the uh, advertisement together, do a national search, uh, and provided first round interview opportunities after uh, cutting down all the applicants, uh, applicant pool. And at this time, we are proud to say that uh, we are advancing our current community development director, Nick Lelac, as the top finalist uh, for that has really stood out uh, in this ingru uh, impressive group of applicants. Uh, so this is our process for today. Uh, at this time, we're going to hand it off to Nick for uh, an introductory statement, uh, opportunity for your personal introduction at this time. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Commissioner DeBone. Welcome, everyone. I am honored to be the finalist for the county administrator position and pleased to introduce myself this evening as well as answer your questions. As you mentioned, I currently serve the county as the community development director, and I serve the state on uh, the Land Conservation and Development Commission as the Eastern Oregon representative. These positions are genuinely rewarding to me as I am able to contribute to improving people's lives and protecting the places that we value. But let's step back for a minute. I grew up in the Willamette Valley, uh, frequently visiting Central Oregon with my family and hoping, as so many people do, to make it home one day. And I'll get to that point in just a moment. My entry into public policy and public service uh, first occurred when I attended Willamette University. I worked uh, at the Oregon State Capitol and visitor services just across the street as a tour guide. Uh, and I, I just thoroughly enjoyed learning about our state's history, our government, um, uh, politics, uh, so much about our state, and, and then sharing that with visitors and residents alike who visited, uh, who visited our capital. My first job then after, after working at the Capitol and graduating from Willamette was with uh, U.S. Senator Bob Packwood in his Washington, D.C. office, uh, first as an intern and then as a legislative correspondent. This was my uh, first, one of, one of my many experiences actually as a boomerang Oregonian, where I would leave and return, leave and return uh, for the next 15 years uh, until our family made Deschutes County our home in 2005. In Washington, D.C., I met my wife-to-be, Alyssa. Uh, 
Uh, next month, we will celebrate our 27th wedding anniversary, and I would not be a finalist for this position without her. Um, and I cannot thank her enough for her support and wisdom throughout my career. We have two boys. We raised our boys uh, here in Bend. Uh, both graduated from Bend High, and we're very fortunate that they're, uh, that they're back in Bend after having uh, some boomerang experiences themselves, working, uh, going to school out of the state, and, and coming, coming back. I'm interested in serving as our next county administrator to lead our organization as we address truly historic times and issues. And I'll just mention four uh, from my perspective. Uh, number one is recovering from the, the, the pandemic that we're experiencing, supporting our families, our businesses, and our communities um, as, we re as we collectively recover from the pandemic. At the same time, uh, we need to think about our own county's operations and, and the services that we provide and how we provide those services in a post-pandemic world, as many organizations are considering um, how they're going to, going to operate in, in the new post-pandemic world. Number two, our rapidly growing population and all of the associated impacts. Um, including, uh, including infrastructure. Our housing and homeless crisis, uh, it's, it's, it's extraordinary and this has to be one of our top priorities going forward as, as a community, as a region, as a state, and, a, and as a country. And fourth, disaster preparedness and primarily from the increasing threats of wildfire. I will briefly share my qualifications for the position through the lens of the Board of County Commissioners, three priorities for this position, beginning with effective organizational leadership. For the past 20 years, I've served in leadership positions in the public, private, and nonprofit sectors, including three years, uh, just over three years with the City of Redmond, and since 2009 uh, with Deschutes County. My approach to effective leadership is based on the following principles. First and, for, and foremost, um, most importantly, is integrity, strong ethical standards, professionalism, respect for everyone, and a genuine commitment to customer service. We must set a high bar as public, for, uh, as public officials in how we perform our work. Second, I embrace and, and have established a culture of innovation and creativity in, in our community development department. It is so important in how we, we solve problems and how we deliver our services and how we ad address uh, future planning efforts for our county. And it's more important now than ever uh, with the historic times and issues that we're facing. Third, providing and communicating a strategic plan for how we're going to deliver the services on an annual and, and uh, several year basis. I achieve this in our community development department with our annual work plan, which if anybody's interested, is available on our website. And the basis of the work plan every year is the, it begins with the Board of County Commissioners annual goals and policies, uh, public input, which is always very important, and the regulatory responsibilities that we have in our department. We then determine how we're going to, to achieve those goals and objectives and priorities and, and community interests um, through a series of projects and services. We allocate the resources necessary and encourage teamwork and collaboration to achieve those projects throughout the year. And then we measure those uh, results. And not only do we measure those results, but we also um, publicize and report those, those results to the Board of Commissioners and to the community. Uh, the result, the outcome, is a high performance organization. Fourth is community engagement and partnerships. And this is the second category that the Board has de uh, determined to be important uh, for the next county administrator. Community engagement and partnerships are essential to making good decisions providing effective and efficient public services, and building relationships at the state level to advocate for our county. I'll provide just a couple of, of brief examples. One, uh, with service delivery uh, with partnerships. In our community development department, uh, we are a one-stop shop for development services. What most people don't know is that a couple of those services we provide are d directly from the state of Oregon. We are agents of the state with our building safety services, as well as our on-site wastewater services. Most people refer to it as septic services. Uh, that requires close collaboration and a partnership with the state of Oregon to ensure that we're correct, correctly and accurately administering their programs in our departments to the benefit of our customers. In terms of advocacy, at the state level, partnerships, coalitions, uh, collaboration uh, with a lot of organization is absolutely essential uh, to successfully working with lawmakers and state agencies to ensure new laws, regulations, grants and funding programs benefit our residents. Um, 
one example that we have right now is a coalition that we're participating in on compromise, uh, compromise legislation to allow rural accessory dwelling units. Um, this has been a three-year effort, uh, creating these and, and sustaining these partnerships and, and collaboration with these organizations does not happen over overnight. It takes a lot of time and, and, and effort and resources to do so. Now to community engagement. And of course, this is the essence of public service, is engaging those we serve in all of our work. Our department excels in this uh, regard, and I am so genuinely proud of the work, the work that we do. Um, it, it's worthy of a standalone presentation, in fact, I think. Um, and we, it, we engage our public in the work plan, which I think we're one of the only organizations to engage the public in developing a work plan on an annual basis. Uh, but there's so much more that we do, and two recent examples really highlight um, both the creativity and innovation as well as our public engagement. Um, and this is really to the credit of our team and our staff, and these were the two recent uh, virtual town halls, uh, or series of town halls, uh, that we conducted, the Planning Commission hosted, um, we conducted community surveys, significant outreach, and probably the best attendance that we've had on long-range planning projects in the last dozen or more years. One focused on wildfire hazard mitigation standards and the other on updating our wildlife habitat inventory. Uh, just terrific uh, participation. Another way that, that we engage the public is we meet regularly with stakeholder organizations. And it's so important for us to share information about what we're working on, as well as inviting feedback from those organization on what's, organizations on what's working well and what's not, so we can, we can address those issues. A couple of those, some of those organizations, uh, the Central Oregon uh, Builders Association, Central Oregon Association of Realtors, and Central Oregon Land Watch. We meet on a regular basis. I do want to emphasize before going to the last point, uh, while I think we are excelling in all these areas, we can and need to do more to involve more members of our community in our work. Third and the final category, and I'm sure I'm just about out of time, is sustainable budgetary leadership. And this is especially important for the county administrator who serves as the county's budget officer. Our county is in solid financial shape, and so some of the, there's a lot of, the, of what we're doing that is working now that we need to, to sustain going forward. And some of it is basic. The, the budget is a reflection of our county's priorities, and we can't forget that. That is the, that is the foundation of our budget document. Um, number two is a, is a transparent and open public process in creating our budget, where the public can watch, participate, they know exactly um, who's making the decisions when and how. It's very, very important. In fact, I think last year was the first year we live streamed the budget meetings, and I hope that that continues in the future so the public can see. There are many other elements to good financial uh, decision making and management. Um, Earning and sustaining a strong credit, un, uh, credit rating, uh, reducing our county's debt, long-term financial uh, planning such as our PERS Reserve Fund, um, auditing our spending, and I'm very pleased to, to, to serve on our county's audit committee as appointed by the Board of Commissioners. Um, and more. As a, as a department head, I'm responsible for sustainably managing our nearly $10 million a year annual budget um, and monitoring its success. Uh, we are in also, our department is in solid financial shape going forward. Um, and I have many, many thanks to our senior financial, or a senior management analyst for, the, for the, her work um, and in supporting me and our department in that regard. I am out of time. I, I thank you for your time and I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Nick. So at this time, we are going to transition to a question and answer period based on questions posed by the community. Uh, as I say, let's take a moment. There's also the opportunity, well, this is a live event uh, recorded this evening. If there's anybody that is interested in sending a question right now, you can send it to info at Deschutes.org. Uh, they will be reviewed and included as time allows. So we're going to go through a few questions that have been prepared by some uh, input just recently. So the first one I'm going to be reading through, and this is the topic of financial stewardship. Central Oregon is seeing unprecedented growth, which is expected, expected to continue over the next decade and beyond. In order to effectively serve the community, the county will need to prepare to flex and expand to meet the needs of our growing population while continuing to demonstrate good financial stewardship. How will you apply your experience and background to help prepare and facilitate such change? 
this is a really important issue, especially as we, as we continue to grow. And, our, it, and it's not just population growth, but our demographics are also changing significantly. Um, and with the change in our demographics will come new demands and, and new service requests that we're going to need to, to, to consider as an organization and how we're going to fund and how we're going to provide those services. Um, new and different services likely to uh, are expanding and changing population on many, on many levels. Um, certainly my experience um, over the last uh, decade or so in the community development department is that we need to make sure that, uh, that we ha are able to um, adequately fund the services we're providing. Um, and we do so through a variety of sources. Uh, in some cases we have fees that help, help provide those resources. Sometimes it's the general fund, it's state grants. Um, in some cases, it's internal service, uh, internal service uh, contracts for, that we're providing for services. And we're going to need to continue uh, to look for a, a variety of funding sources in order to support the needs of our growing population. Um, I think we're doing a good job with, with most of those now, but I think we're going to, again, we're going to need to be creative and innovative as, as we go forward. And we're probably, not probably, I'm sure we're going to need to address and think about some of these issues differently. Yeah, certainly in the short term, um, there's the American uh, Recovery Plan, the ARP, uh, monies that we'll be able to utilize to, to meet some of these needs um, in our community, in our region, but, uh, but we know those aren't going to be sustained. So we're going to need to really think about how we provide those services um, over the long term. Certainly, um, I look forward to working closely with the Board of County Commissioners, our Budget Committee, our uh, Finance Department, our Chief Financial Officer, Greg Munn, and his team. Um, as we collectively uh, think about how best to serve, how best to, to finance, uh, finance these services going forward. We need to be, we, we, um, we, again, we, we, we have to make sure that, uh, that, that we have the resources necessary to provide the, the services in order to be fiscally uh, prudent and fiscally responsible going forward. Great. Thank you very much. Our next question is provided by Sherry Pinner. Thank you, Commissioner Devon. My name is Sherry, and I'm a senior management analyst at the Community Development Department. My question focuses on vision and strategy, and the question is, what is one lasting impact you hope to leave on Deschutes County? Thank you, Sherry. Uh, I, I just had uh, credited Sherry with her great uh, budget work in our department, and I was not aware that she was going to be asking a question. It's, it's, it's nice to see you. One lasting impact I hope to, to leave on Deschutes County. Um, gosh, um, I think there's many lasting impacts I hope to, to leave on, on Deschutes County. And, and I hope it is that, that um, people see us um, as supporting, um, supporting our community, supporting our residents, supporting our businesses thrive um, in, in every way possible. It, through our customer service standards that, that we hold in such high regard um, and that uh, that, that people come to the county knowing that we're going uh, to do everything we can to help and to, and to provide the best service possible so that they leave um, with a great experience with the county. A lot of, um, you know, as we know, a lot of people are, uh, only have their interactions with the county maybe when they vote or when they pay their taxes or they go to the landfill. Um, and wherever they're, they're coming and whoever they're visiting, I, I genuinely hope they, that, they have a great, that they have a great experience um, and we certainly, in the in community development department, and I see it throughout the county organization, provide um, just outstanding customer services. And uh, we, I think we go the extra mile. And I hope that people remember that I was a part of, of that culture um, and that it's sustained over time. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you very much. So another question uh, uh, provided to us, and I'll be asking it. As a taxpayer whose money goes to fund Deschutes County's government, is it, imp uh, it is important to me that the organization's employees, leadership, oversight, and governance at all levels is reflective of our community's growing socioeconomic, racial, cultural, and political diversity. Do you share this priority? And if so, what tangible steps will you take towards achieving these goals? I absolutely share um, the, this, this priority and this perspective. And this, this goes uh, directly to the, to the statement that I made when, when I was discussing our community engagement and, and how we're, I think we're really excelling in this regard, but there's so much more that we need to do. So this question just allows me to, to expand on that a bit. There are many people, uh, of course, in, in, our, in our county that, that, aren't, that do not participate in our processes for one reason or another. 
and it is so important that we, that we reach out to them in ways that are meaningful to them, in places uh, where they're comfortable in participating in our local government. Um, that is so critical. Uh, in my role on the Land Conservation and Development Commission, I, I'm, I'm currently serving as a liaison to a committee that is, is considering how we need to, to change our business practices to better um, involve um, historically mar marginalized and vulnerable populations um, in the important decisions that we make every day. Um, we're midway through that process right now. I don't have the answers. Um, I wish I, I wish I did. Uh, the, the committee is a really diverse committee. I look forward to listening to them and learning from them through that process and then bringing those experiences back to Deschutes County and, and doing the very, very best that we can to engage all members um, of our community in, 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 our, uh, in, in our processes. So tangible steps, one of the ta tangible steps is really taking the lessons learned from that process and, and, and employing those um, in Deschutes County, but not just a one-size-fits-all. We really need to, to understand the populations um, that, that are being underserved or um, our vulnerable pro populations in our county that we're not serving as well as we could or should or don't have the accessibility to services and finding out how best, uh, how best to do that. Um, we work closely with our communications director on a, on a regular ba basis to continuously employ new strategies uh, to reach people to, to do everything from, for example, we have a, a vacancy on our planning commission in Southern Deschutes County. How can we reach all segments of the South County um, residents so that uh, we really broaden and expand uh, the p potential for somebody to, to, to participate and serve on our planning commission representing that region. Um, I think this is going to be a, a very, very, if I had a fifth, I mentioned four, four points earlier. If there were a fifth one, this would certainly be um, on, that, on that list of the top five. Great. Thank you very much. At this time, we're going to, uh, I'm going to hand off to, for a question. I'm not sure exactly who at this time. Trigvi. Looks like Trigvi Bulkin may be next. There we go. Hi, this is Trigby. I work in human resources with Shoots County. The topic of this question is growth and transportation. The question is, it was submitted anonymously uh, the City of Bend and ODOT are both pursuing initiatives related to increasing infrastructure for non-motorized transportation, both within the City of Bend and connecting to other areas within the county. What role do you see for the county in terms of leading or supporting such work? This is a timely question. Um, very timely, and, and I hope people uh, participate in, in the projects that are currently working, that we're currently engaged in. One, uh, probably the most important, is the updating of our, uh, of our county's transportation system plan, uh, led by our county's road department, Chris Doty and his team, uh, consultant team, and our department, uh, our senior transportation planner and others. Um, so that's, that's going to be our umbrella document for how we think about um, how we, we um, support uh, increasing infrastructure for non-motorized uh, transportation uh, options throughout the county. Very, very important there. Um, another one is that we have a state grant to initiate a project for uh, creating a Sisters Rural Trails Plan throughout Sisters Country. Uh, we're coordinating closely with the, the City of Sisters, the Sisters Vision Implementation Team, and primarily the U.S. Forest Service because a lot of the, the lands in the Greater Sisters Country and Greater Sisters area um, are, are in uh, U.S. Forest Service ownership. So uh, really partnering with the City of, of Sisters and the U.S. Forest Service on that project. And that project could then become a model for how we then uh, pr uh, create a rural trails um, connecting our cities, our resorts, our, our significant places of interest around the county uh, going forward. Another group, uh, a really active group, and there is our uh, Deschutes Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee, really committed citizens, uh, dedicated citizens to this issue, um, and I think really listening to their recommendations going forward. They're very thoughtful. 
Um, and it's great because they're a mix of urban and rural residents from all, all across our county. So um, I definitely think there's a, an important role for, for us to play. And uh, when we think about non-motorized transportation, um, certainly there is the transportation element of it, but there's also the recreational element of it. It can serve um, multiple needs. Uh, and I mentioned the Forest Service, but certainly the BLM is also very important. Our public, all of our public partners are really uh, important to this um, effort. So. Uh, I think there are multiple roles that our county can play. And uh, again, for those that are interested, get involved. To get involved now with our, TS, our TSP, our Transportation System Plan Update, um, I believe we have a, a website um, on that and uh, a lot of public hearings and, and uh, public engagement forthcoming on that. So, so get involved and, uh, and make a difference. Call to action. <clears throat> and who might be next? I don't Next, we're going to hear from. I believe that's me. My name is Jason. Okay, I, uh, Jason I work at the Deschutes County Human Resources, and I am asking a question anonymously submitted by a Deschutes County employee on the topic of innovation. It is a, a three-part question, technically. Uh, the county is a large organization with many moving parts. What are two areas where you believe the county excels? What is your strategy for managing change and developing innovative solutions? And how will you promote a culture to support your strategy? I started to answer this question briefly in my opening remarks by establishing a culture of innovation and creativity. And I think that's uh, really, really important. Um, in no, in, in, um, it, the culture it means that our staff know that, that their opinions are valued. And often, uh, our staff have, have the best answers to those. So let me, let me back up and answer the questions directly here. Um, what are two areas you believe the county excels in? Um, I've already mentioned, I've, I've mentioned uh, customer service that I think we provide uh, exceptional service uh, to our customers. And the second is, is in financial management. Um, I think we're in a very solid uh, position uh, going forward. Um, uh, in strategy and managing change and developing innovative s solutions. Um, Again, I think that what's going to be important there is having the mindset and the openness to consider new ideas, new alternatives for how we address uh, the historic times and, and issues that we're currently facing on so many levels. And I don't think we, we probably even know uh, the half of what is, is to come in the years ahead of the changes we're going to need to adapt uh, to. Adapt to. Uh, it's, going to be, it's going to take collaboration and partnerships. Um, as I mentioned previously, we, we currently work with our stakeholder organizations to find out what's working and what's not. I think it's, it's important with them, uh, with our stakeholder organizations, with our, you know, with our residents, uh, to exchange information. Uh, this is what we're thinking might be a good approach to, to a, a problem or to a plan or to a service. And and to gain their feedback prior to um, launching that service. Uh, po uh, pilot projects can often work very well in employing new technologies or new approaches to, to projects, absolutely involving our employees. Our employees are, gonna, are the foundation of our department. Uh, they're often the ones that have the direct interaction with our, with our customers, um, administer the service, uh, services and operations, and inviting uh, their feedback uh, throughout the process. It's not just the culture of innovation, um, but it's also really making sure that, that they understand um, that, they, that their opinions are valued and, and suggesting um, changes to how we, how we um, provide business, how you promote a culture to support your, st your strategy. Um, it's having those meaningful conversations. It's, it's meeting regularly with stakeholders. It's meeting regularly with our staff um, and making sure that, that they know and they feel comfortable um, to suggest the changes um, and that we, we celebrate those those ideas and uh, and we and we do the same with uh, with with the community you were going back to our community uh, development department's annual work plan um, it makes such a difference when we invite the public in creating that work plan every year uh, the public has great ideas that at the staff level uh, that we haven't thought about or the board hasn't thought about or the planning commission hasn't thought about and inviting those those comments and thoughts and then we collectively evaluate those um, and those that, that make the most sense and have the most support, we include in the work plan. And then, and, uh, and then we, we deliver the, those results. So, um, yeah, I think it, it, does, it begins with a culture, um, and a very supportive culture of creativity and, and innovation, and then executing that. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask the next question. I'm Whitney Hale. I'm the county's communications director. And I have a two-part question as well related to the pandemic and pandemic response. 
How has COVID-19 challenged you to think differently about the problems facing the county and solutions needed to solve them? What does the county need to do to ensure our community perseveres and thrives once the pandemic is over? This is a big, big question and a very timely uh, question, and, and I think we're all trying to figure this out um, right now. Um, certainly, it's it's challenged my thinking um, about the problems that are facing our county. Um, certainly, uh, people's preferences in in where where they live and how they work is changing dramatically. We're it's all over, of course, our, our local press that we're a Zoom town, and I think that's broadly defined as a Zoom county and a Zoom re Zoom region. As, as people are moving here uh, in just truly extraordinary numbers and, and then the associated impacts on housing. Um, and, and a lot of that is, uh, is created by the people's ability to work remotely um, or, and or it's, people can work remotely a few days per week and then they need to be in, in another office a few days per week. And we already experienced this. This isn't, um, I think it was uh, Katie Brooks with the Ben Chamber mentioned this in, in the bulletin uh, back in February, uh, that many of these, these transitions that we were beginning to see in our economy and our community and our, and our preferences um, were already occurring and they were already occurring in Deschutes County. It's just that the pandemic has accelerated those, those changes. And I think we need, to, we need to understand what that means for our housing supply. Uh, there will have associated impacts on our transportation systems. Um, certainly it could lead to a lot more people moving here and then associated impacts on our airports, the Bend Airport, uh, the Redmond Airport, Sun River Airport, Sisters and, and, and others. Um, what do we need to do to ensure our community um, perseveres and thrives once the pandemic is over. Um, I think we need to, to work together to, to find what those solutions are. I certainly don't have those answers at this point. Um, I think as, as a county, as we think about um, our operations as we go forward, uh, certainly a lot of our, most of our employees, I shouldn't say most, but a lot of our employees are working remotely now. Uh, we've learned that they can provide outstanding services and are very efficient working remotely, and I think that's something we need to think about going forward. Uh, think about going forward. In our community development department, for example, um, we're reaching uh, almost the, the, the pre-Great Recession staffing levels that we previously had. It was 78 employees, now it's, uh, we're almost up to 66. And we were so constrained, at, but we weren't just constrained in our building at that point because we had very robust um, satellite offices where we don't have those now. Well, one option to saving, to saving money going forward may be to have employees share workstations, to have employees who uh, uh, enjoy and, and uh, appreciate working remotely or who need to work remotely due to childcare or other factors. Um, I think there's a lot of things that we're going to need to think about how we do differently. Um, and then the associated impacts. Do we need as much parking everywhere if, if not everybody is, um, is driving um, all the time? That's not to say we don't, we don't need parking. We absolutely do. But what are those associated uh, transportation and parking related impacts as we go forward? Um, so a, a, a lot of questions there, and, and I certainly don't have all those answers, and I think it's going to take uh, community conversations, uh, w working closely with our board of commissioners and, and others to determine um, how, how our community will persevere and thrive once the pandemic is over. The last thing I will say is we're, uh, we're planning to update uh, the Deschutes County Comprehensive Plan beginning later this, this, uh, this calendar year, and that could be a very, very important point that we address with the community. Uh, what, what are those issues that we need to address, housing, um, jobs, transportation, um, so many of those issues, and engaging the community in that process so we can think holistically and comprehensively about what those issue, issues are and inviting um, really meaningful impact from the community on how we, uh, on how we address those together. Thank you very much. Next, yes. Sarah, I think we're ready for you. Oh, great, sorry. Uh, hi, my name is Kara, and I am the Administrative Manager at the District Attorney's Office. And I have an anonymously submitted question for you today regarding housing, and the question is, Housing supply shortages and increased homelessness are both rising regional concerns. How can Deschutes County work with the community to help address this? Yeah, this uh, this is such an important issue, and um, it's just 
uh, as, as the pandemic is accelerating people's preferences and how and where they live, um, so too is the, pri the, the, the escalation that we're experiencing in housing prices and, and the associated impacts on homeless and everybody else is just, it's just extraordinary. Uh, Deschutes County already plays a very significant role um, in addressing homeless and, uh, homelessness and, and housing supply shortages. So let me just, let me just mention a couple. One um, is the Veterans Village that's about to open here in fairly short order. And uh, as the county initially uh, began to explore uh, how to create such a village and, and model that based on what Clackamas County and the city of Eugene and others have um, have done. I was um, really uh, privileged and fortunate to have visited those so I could share my experiences um, with the Board of Commissioners uh, and our community partners and how we how we might uh, create a similar um, veterans village here. Now I haven't been involved with it since then. That's really been our property manager, then Heroes, um, Eric Tobias and so many uh, champions that have just been extraordinary. But uh, the county's played an important role as that's on county county owned property. The county um, regularly has donated land for affordable housing projects. Most recently a very significant um, uh, project called Skyline Village in the city of Redmond, which is uh, the public hearing for the, for the Board of Commissioners is scheduled for Mar May 26th to consider an urban growth boundary expansion to include that property um, with I think it's over 400 units. I don't recall the exact number, but a very significant number of housing units uh, to be developed there, many of which are going to be uh, dedicated and required for mixed income uh, or, or uh, various uh, income uh, thresholds um, that people will need to, to, to earn to qualify to live there. So the board has, has, has really been a leader there. But that's not just there. The, 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 uh, the Board of Commissioners has donated land in the city of Lapine to, to Housing Works and Neighbor Impact, um, Habitat Humanity, and others. So, so uh, land donations have been a significant one. Um, we created a rural housing strategy uh, just a couple of months ago um, that really outlined a range of options for our county to consider. Uh, we're currently implementing two of those, one of which is uh, to advocate for rural accessory dwelling units in the legislature, which I previously mentioned, um, which appears close to passage. It's now scheduled for a work session here uh, on May 20th, uh, coming up in just a couple of days, and then hopefully, hopefully adoption by the legislature um, shortly thereafter, since the session ends soon. So uh, supporting rural accessory dwelling units, which, which could provide another source of housing. Um, and then another one that the, that the board has, has directed our department uh, to work on, and we're currently creating the white paper on it right now, a research paper is studying uh, managed camping. We've, we've often thought of that as, this as campgrounds, RV parks, manufactured home parks. What are the, what are, what are the opportunities today? What are the, the, the opportunities in state law? Are there any gaps? If there are gaps, how do we bridge those gaps? Um, and then if we are employing all possible uh, solutions, what are the next steps we need to take that we, we need to take at the, at the county level, uh, going back to the community engagement and partnerships, which coalitions do we need to build at the state level to then change state laws to provide more opportunities. So there are a variety of things uh, that our county is currently involved in, um, and there's more that, w that, that, we are, that we can do, and there is more that we are doing um, right now. And then stay tuned, if the Rural Accessory Dwelling Unit bill passes, we'll have a very significant uh, community engagement um, on that later in the summer and into the fall. So there is a kind of a live input uh, question here, and it's along these same lines. Uh, do you think the Bend Village project helps or hurts the quality of life of the citizens of Bend? So a little bit, you know, you could read into that question. So this is just a, you know, a follow-on question. But the quality of life for this, these different types of housing that, that we're talking about. I think transitional housing is, is absolutely critical, and I think it improves the quality of life. Now, the people that live immediately around it uh, may, have, may have a different opinion, and I think it's really important that, uh, that we work with those neighbors uh, to understand their perspectives and their issues and concerns, and then we attempt to mitigate those to the extent that we can. Are there buffer areas? Is there landscaping? Is there fencing? Is there, are there um, operating rules within the Bend Village to make sure that the operations um, are, are conducive because it's, it, it's, I think it's at this point, I think it's 15 transitional housing, um, but that's, that's 15 homes for people that are currently homeless or, or don't have housing or, or are houseless, meaning that they're living in a car or van or something like that. And to, to provide that shelter 
gives these people a, a place to get back on their feet and get back into the community. And the idea is it's transitional housing. Um, it's not permanent residence. Now, the, the, vet, the, the village may be, be permanent for at least a period of 10 years, um, but I absolutely believe that it improves the quality of life for, for our region, while recognizing there are some impacts for some of those that live immediately around it. Yeah. Community conversations. Thank you. Thank you. Exactly. Discussed. Yeah. Whitney. And I'm going to jump back in with another question that was submitted by staff. The newly hired county administrator will hire several new department heads based on retirements. If hired as county administrator, what characteristics would you look for in a department head, and how would you ensure the best candidate is hired? So ensuring the best candidate is hired, I think it's very, impo very important to have a process similar to what we're currently experiencing, with, that I'm experiencing uh, with this recruitment. Um, I certainly think our, our department heads, especially with Deschutes County, um, we're a leader in so many things statewide and nationally. It deserves a national recruitment. We really need to cast a wide umbrella um, to make sure that we hire the very best candidate uh, through an inclusive process. So um, the inclusive process could, uh, should be panels that include community members as well as staff, stakeholder members, um, that we have a thorough vetting of, of the candidates. Uh, very important. Um, and then, of course, as the county administrator, I would uh, work very closely with the Board of County Commissioners to make sure that, that the selected candidate or the finalists of the candidate uh, will, are committed to implementing the Board of Commissioners' um, policies going forward. Uh, characteristics, uh, we need people that are going to be customer service oriented. They're going to be experts in their field. They're going to be innovative uh, and creative in how we tackle problems. Um, I like to say that they need to be able to hit the ground running because everything happens fast in Deschutes County, it feels like, but we need, we need uh, quality over just speed. So um, I think those are some of the, the – the, they they're going to need to be able to connect with people in our region and understand uh, the values. Uh, we always invite external perspectives and opinions, um, but just also making sure that, that, that those opinions and values um, also respect uh, those that we share here in Central Oregon and in Deschutes County. Great, thank you very much. So at this time, another uh, question provided to us. Uh, what do you think Deschutes County residents don't quite understand about how their county government operates? If you could dispel one misnomer, what would that be? I like this question um, because I think a lot of people um, don't necessarily understand what county governments do. A lot of people have uh, a, a good understanding of, of what cities do. They live in cities. They see the full range of city services. Um, and there's less of an understanding about a county. And I think um, one area that, that people have learned a whole lot about in the last 15 months is the public health services um, that our county, uh, that all counties provide. Um, including the mental health services. Uh, so I think, I think public health, people, unless people are, are directly involved and engaged in those services, I don't think a lot of people have an awareness and an understanding. And I can certainly say, even as a, as a county staff person, I've learned a lot about our public health and mental health um, uh, services and, and our department this, this past year. We've had the, I've had the opportunity to work with them on other projects, but um, I've learned so much more for them uh, this past year. Um, they probably also don't recognize uh, that uh, how, um, how many services that we share with other organizations and why our partnerships are so important and why the commissioners um, have really prioritized community engagement and, and really that partnership piece is so important. Um, as most people probably have a sense, 76 percent of Deschutes County is in federal ownership. So we need to have a strong partnership with the federal government um, in order to meet our, our residents' many needs, be it from wildfire mitigation, recreation. Um, there's so many different issues um, with, with the federal government. Uh, the fact that most of our residents live in cities, the partnerships with our cities is, is critically important. Um, all the different funding mechanisms that, that fund all of our services. The health department is uh, certainly the, the perfect example with the state funding um, for so many of their, for so many services. Uh, our road department, um, some people uh, may not understand that uh, just, you know, it's not just funded by SDCs um, and the gas tax, but there's a lot of other uh, state funding that, that supports our road department. I think there's a lot that, uh, that our residents likely don't, uh, don't understand. Um, I could dispel one misnomer, what would that be? I don't know what, uh, gosh, what that misnomer um, might be. 
I don't have a good answer to that question. Um, you know, uh, uh, maybe it's, it, it's just in, in our world, in, um, in community development, a lot of people think uh, they don't understand that uh, a lot of the, the rules and regulations that we're administering um, are established in state law. Um, some parts of our department, uh, we're agents of the state, and other parts of our department, uh, we're administering state law, but we have a lot of local, discre local discretion. Um, the state has a lot to do with how counties operate and, and the rules and regulations um, that we administer, particularly in our community development department. Um, and so while, uh, while they may not like that, uh, the regulation that they're required to comply with uh, it, in, the, in, the, in the community development department, um, we can certainly inform them of where it's come from, what it's intended to address, um, and how they might comply with it. Um, and at the same time, share with them that uh, this, isn't what, this isn't or wasn't a county decision, um, but rather we're um, implementing a state requirement. Thank you very much. <clears throat> So at this time, uh, this, we have been uh, working through our, our finalist in our county administrator recruitment process. Uh, this is our, our community forum. We've had some interaction from the community. We've had some questions provided beforehand, read by some different folks in our staff. Uh, this is being recorded. Uh, I would ask that uh, please, please share this process with whoever may be interested in learning about uh, the you know county, county administrator recruitment, but also the 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 role and function of of your county government also. So please share with your friends and family. Um, we do want to hear from you. A survey is available. Uh, there's a website, deschutes.org/administrator. There's a link to a community forum uh, and survey. So if there's any feedback, any questions, please communicate directly with us through that process. And uh, that the uh, survey will be open until May 25th. So Nick Lelak, thank you very much for joining us this evening for our community forum and this recruitment process. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you.